Welcome in Corner Street Connection. I'm Brandon Shanahan. Here we have our special hangover episode. Um, you know, I kind of thought of that name as like, oh, well, you know, Sunday morning you're hungover. I didn't think I'd actually feel so bad that it feels like a hangover. But uh, here we are. Yeah, this is awful. Uh, Nebraska's own two. Um, yeah, if you had told me that at the beginning of the year, I, I think I would have thrown up. And somehow, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't describe to me how bad this feels as a Husker fan. This is a disaster. I mean, because it's not all the things that we thought were going to be fixed when we got rid of Scott Frost and brought on Matt Rule. It's just not not any better. It's worse in in some aspects. You know, we'll, we'll talk a lot today about Jeff Sims, but as as a whole, offensively, like it just looks so bad so we'll kind of get into it nebraska loses uh to colorado i'm not even sure exactly what the score is um but gosh it just didn't look good even a little bit like none of it was you know competent football the, the defense looked fine i guess i shouldn't say everything is awful the defense was was really good i thought so yeah lost 36 to 14 my Gosh, what a disaster. And I just, it, it, I have, I'm hard pressed to, to find a lot of words to describe this offense in, in a positive light. Because you, you just look around, Jeff Sims can't feel the snap. He can't. He, he moved the ball pretty well, I thought, you know, through the air until he started fumbling on snaps and handoffs. And he can't do anything right. And I don't, I have a big thing where like I it feels very lazy when things don't go well as an offense. It just point bench the quarterback, bring in the backup. So I, I really try not to do that at all costs. Cause it, if it's lazy, it's like, oh well, the refs lost us the game. Or oh we gotta fire the coach. The coach stinks. It seems like every college casual college football fan hates their offensive coordinator no matter what they do. But what else do you do do you do here? He's got this team has eight turnovers in two games. And they played Minnesota and Colorado. It's not like they're playing Michigan's and Ohio States or Penn States with ferocious defenses. Minnesota's got a good defense. Colorado's defense is, is fine. Um they can get by with that, but I mean, these aren't world beaters. These aren't teams riddled with NFL talent, just ball hawking and ripping out the ball. Like these are so, so much unforced turnovers, unforced mistakes. Like it's, it's, um, it's really disheartening to see. And what was disheartening to me is that we saw this game yesterday. Two teams on the field. The one team was focused, disciplined, prepared dialed in calm and it wasn't the team that overhauled their entire roster in an offseason no no no. it was nebraska it was supposed to be the, the easier rebuild of the two colorado was the worst team in college football last year nebraska I, they won four games it's four times as many as colorado won last year you know they brought back some talent then they went into the transfer portal. It's not like they were allergic to the transfer portal. They got their starting quarterback from the transfer portal. Hot dog. They got Jeff Sims from the transfer portal. How fantastic is that? So, what a disaster. Um, I forgot where that tangent started. Oh, the dog's got to yell at somebody. <sighs> Jeff Sims. I Okay, yeah, yeah, because it's not like... They're just making good plays on on defense and, and, and causing these interceptions. Like they're it's really just bad offense, bad execution, bad everything, really. Cause I mean, you can't even feel the snap. He dropped several snaps. He lost one of them in the red zone. I mean, you gotta think, even if he just holds on to the football, and early I, I kind of made a joke in the game, like, hey, let's not bench the guy, but maybe he get somebody in to, to handle the snaps in the red zone. And then it got worse. Like he just, I. What else do you do other than move on from Jeff Sims at this point? Well, I guess not move on from Jeff Sims because they didn't even consider it. Matt Rule said after the game, which is 
wildly frustrating because we trust him as a, as a good coach. We trust him as, you know, a guy who's been in this exact position before and, and rebuilding teams and, you know, having high expectations. I, I would have given Matt Rule more of a pass if, it, if he had just come out and said, hey, we consider everything all the time. We thought that Jeff Sims gave us the, the best chance to, to win this football game, um, and we stand by that. Fine, whatever. At least it's for him to come out and say, no, we didn't consider that at all. Jeff's our guy. It is what it is. It doesn't matter if he turns it over four times a game. It doesn't matter if he turns it over eight times a game. No matter what, we're sticking with Jeff Sims. What a disaster. Why? What's the, what, what good does that do? Jeff Sims? Are you not considering it? He clearly wasn't himself. He's clearly in his head. You know, I saw something from TCU's camp. Chandler Morris, the, the quarterback there, he talked to a, 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 a sports psychologist after the Colorado game last week. He said that he couldn't feel comfortable running the football for whatever reason. He just felt stuck in the pocket. So he talked to a sports psychologist because he couldn't exit the pocket. This guy can't even field snaps. He need, We need to get this guy... You can get this guy to shrink ASAP. Like he clearly wasn't himself, and you know, I'm. There's a reason why Jeff Sims is the starting quarterback, and, and this is my biggest, you know, pet peeve when people do kind of just go right to the bench, the quarterback aspect. It's not like who else? these guys see these quarterbacks every day. Matt Rule knows Henrik Harburg and Chuba Purdy way better than I do, way better than anybody on Twitter. And I'm not saying that Jeff Sims isn't the better quarterback, isn't going to give Nebraska the best chance to win football games. But he's also given Nebraska a pretty good chance to lose all of these games. And that's where the frustration lies, is not just... It's not that I think Henrik Harburg is better than Jeff Sims. Clearly, I don't know anything about... I, I don't know much about Henrik Harburg. But I feel like he can field the snap. I feel like he can uh, hand the ball off. You know, create some kind of exchange. Something like that. I I feel like he can settle this offense down. He can give, you know, the, the, the defense wore down. And I'm not even sure if it was fatigue. Because, I mean, these guys are in great shape. But it's just the, the mental fatigue of, well, we we know they're not going to score on offense when they get back on the field. And that's saying they didn't try their hardest. not saying that they gave up. But, man, a, obviously they didn't look at it at the end. Why would they? Their offense was doing them no favors. It, it, it's got to be disheartening. It's got to be really disheartening as a defense. Well, and I saw that with the, the Denver Broncos last year. They had the number one offense for like 10 weeks. And then it became clear, like, oh, there's something up with Russell Wilson. Oh, there's – it's not working out offensively. Ah, oh, man, we – and it's just hard to get dialed in when you're going out there drive after drive after drive, doing your jobs, doing everything that you can do. And it's just not good enough because the offense is giving you a zip. And now with that said, Colorado's a good team. Like, actually good. Like, not just like they were atrocious last year. Now they're miles better. And the the gap makes it feel like they're better than they are. They're actually a really good football team. I'm excited to see how they play against Oregon here in a couple weeks. And seeing how they um, and how they compete on that level. TCU's still unknown. I still think TCU's good. I still think... Um, you know this Nebraska win is a good is a good win. They took care of business, but you, you see these two teams, and they're just you, you got to imagine that Nebraska had the bigger head start. They had four wins last year. They I don't know have never been considered the worst college football team in America, and yet, and especially compared to Colorado, and that's kind of where this the cynicism comes from is I saw Colorado. I, I see what Colorado's doing. And it's not even 
that I think that they're the the whole roster overturn thing is 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 such a unique thing. You know, I I can't fairly say that Matt Rule should have gone in and gotten eighty six you know new players and. I don't think that's it, but he didn't need to. He doesn't need to. You know, I mean, the, the players we have are fine. It's just they look so unprepared, so disorganized, so just not ready for Saturdays. Like, they, it, it feels like Matt Rule just got there last week. Like, y'all on the plane in Minneapolis, hey, how you doing? My name is Matt Rule. I'm going to be your football coach this season. And here's what we're going to do. And that That's kind of the feeling that I have. And that's, you know, exactly what, like, I remember Scott Frost a few couple of games. They weren't great by any means. You know, they lost to Colorado too, oddly enough, in his first, um, first, like, Power 5 game. And actually, his first game in general, because Akron got rained out. But... It's different. It's different because it's it's one thing to like go out there and you just know you're not the better team. It is what it is. They have better players. They have better schemes. They did things better than you did. It is what it is. But it's it's a certain kind of insanity as a Husker fan here to watch these games and be like, well, hey, maybe don't turn the ball over eight times in two games. Maybe then we'll see what happens. Hey, maybe... Figure out how to feel the snap. You can't feel the snap. That's preparation, man. That's not talent. That's not scheme. That's fundamentals. How do you not get that right? And I get it. Like one or two times is what it is. But it happened. Quarterback running back exchanges. Like, what are we doing here? What's the, what's, I just have no words for it because you, you see how well the, the, the defense is, is competing and it's just, I, I don't understand what's going on here, but, you know, lots to, to feel better about, lots to feel worse about as far as college football goes. Gonna dive into that here with uh, an updated better, worse, the same. But Nebraska 0 and 2. And here's the thing they better dial in for North Northern Illinois. Because if they can't beat Northern Illinois, they might not win a single football game this year. You know, kind of my if I'm gonna look at the 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 glass half full, I think it's gonna be really funny if we beat Iowa. And it's like our second win of the season. But kind of go over here, uh, better, worse, same. Teams that I feel better about, Texas. I mean, I, I, I'm i afraid that they're actually back. I mean, going into Tuscaloosa. Now, granted, I'd also like to preface this. I think Alabama's toast. I, I think we're done seeing Nick Saban National Championship games. There's It's, it's seemingly clear that there's room for one elite football program down south. And until they can prove that they can dethrone Georgia or anybody can dethrone Georgia, I mean, it's not Alabama any, a, a, anymore. So I don't want to say this is like beating the, you know, Alabama teams of past. There, there, there certainly is a, a little bit of a, of a haze to it. But regardless, still going into Tuscaloosa, and doing something that very few folks thought that they could do. Um, and actually doing it. You know, we talk about it. We talk about the, the Ross. We talk about their 19 starters back. We talk about Quinn Ewers. We talk about how Steve Sarkeesian is a better coach than Tom Herman and Charlie Strong. And the, the guy who's capable of doing this. So... I mean, and this is the year to do it. You got to get, um, you got to get some momentum going into to SEC play next year. We'll see if, if Oklahoma can kind of do the same. But Texas, they're back. It is what it is. Um, the Pac-12 is better than I thought. And now I also talked about the Pac-12 all all season being the best team 
for the best conference one through four. And that's true. I stand by that for sure. But what I kind of saw over the weekend was even like their bad teams are are pretty good. Not Stanford. Stanford's a different deal. But Washington State beat Wisconsin. Cal took it to to uh, to Auburn last night after midnight. A Big Twelve after dark, Pac Twelve after dark. I guess I guess they're not going to the Big Twelve. Um, Arizona took it to Mississippi State. The Pac Twelve. I knew. Well, last year my consensus was that the, the Pac Twelve had the most good teams. Not a whole lot of great, not any great teams, but a lot of good teams which does kind of stink because then they kind of beat up on each other. And that's how you miss the playoff for as long as the, the Pac-12 has. But now I think they might just have the fewest bad teams. In addition to the most good teams, which, you know, I would argue makes them the best conference in college football. And we'll talk about, you know, the perennial best conference in college football here in a little bit. If, if you're looking ahead, um, USC, they're as good as advertised. They're better than I thought. They were so dialed in. You know, I have some concerns about their schedule, about playing nine consecutive games against Power Five teams, including Notre Dame, Oregon, Utah, Washington. No buys in between any of those back to back weeks. Just a nasty slate. But if there's any team, I mean, they might be a top three team. And they also might not make the conference championship game. I'm still not sure of that. But we'll see here in a few weeks. Uh, better also the Nebraska defense. Like, it is what it is. You know, I, I talk a lot about how bad Jeff Sims is. How he can't field the snap. Can't hand the ball off. Can't make basic reads. But there were some bright spots there, and the Nebraska defense is one of them. Um, I was here a little bit better at turning the ball over, but seeing that Colorado offense that just tore up TCU up and down the field, left and right, just at will, almost like they were running a script the entire game. And seeing them struggle, 13 points going into halftime, be a lot less than 13 points if Jeff Sims didn't, Turn the ball over right before halftime. Nebraska defense is, is is real, and if they do win any games this year, it's going to be because they they're the real deal. Things they feel worse about somehow Jeff Sims is still on this list. He was on this list last week, and somehow is still on it. I don't know how he does it, but he just keeps lowering the bar for himself. Last week I was just pissed. I was just like, don't let Jeff throw the football. Great, just don't let him throw the football. I hear that he's a good runner. He clearly can't stop throwing interceptions. Don't let him throw the football. Uh, this year, or this week, went from don't let him throw the football to don't let him field snaps. Snap it to somebody else. Snap it to Gabe Irvin Jr. And then have him hand it off to himself. Or if it's a pass play, have him hand it off to Jeff Sims. Just have somebody else field the snaps. Um. Uh, Man, he just, he stunk. I can't believe it. Texas A&M, I was really high on Texas A&M. I thought, kind of like Texas in, 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 in a different light, where it's like, if it's going to come together, it's going to be this year. This year, we're, we're, we're going to see the ceiling. You know, we, 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 we've seen what it looks like when things don't go well, when, when, when you lose key players, when you implement new systems, this and that. But there's no excuses this year. I mean, last last year they lost a bunch of close games. I, I gave them the benefit of the doubt going into this year. And they're just not doing it. Uh, and, you know, a loss to Miami. Miami, I'm, I'm pretty high on, you know, same kind of thing. Actually, in the exact same boat as Texas A&M, I thought they had a disappointing last campaign last year. Tyler Van Dyke. If you watch my ACC preview, I talk about Tyler Van Dyke, and I'm like, man, if he can just capture a little bit of what what he looked like in 2021, they're going to be eight nine win team. 
And I think this proves that. I think this proves that for sure. Fox stinks. Um, shout out Joel Klatt. I thought that he, especially as a Colorado alum and a former Colorado football quarterback, I thought he did a great job calling the, the Colorado-Nebraska game. I thought everything else about that broadcast was so slanted. And, like, I get it. Colorado's a, the, the more exciting story. You know, Joel Klatt mentioned, they might be the single most, they might be the single biggest story in sports, period. Football, baseball, basketball, in the world. Sports, well, I don't know about the world. I don't want to get ratioed by Jordan Lyles here, but definitely in America. What else is bigger? So I even expected like a like a 70-30 Colorado lean. Like 7 out of every 10 minutes would be spent talking specifically about Colorado. I mean, it wasn't even close. It was 90-10 to be generous. Generously. 90-10, you know, you could probably talk me into 95-5 Colorado. But you also got to... And, and I'm not saying that they would talk about Nebraska as is, but like there is a lot of, a lot to this rivalry that they kind of glossed over. Also, man, I Colorado's uniforms stunk. Those were so bad. They were so poor. They were just black and white. And I'm mad about it to this day. I I, I had a whole Twitter thread about it yesterday. Because so much of this rivalry, to me, it feels like the black and gold and the white and red. And they just, they 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 they, they, they contrast so well. And that's one of the things I was so excited to see. And, and, and so I feel like I got robbed a little bit. On the flippity flop, it does probably feel a little bit better. Because it doesn't quite feel like the same game for some reason when it's a team wearing black and white versus a team wearing black and gold. But, I mean, what the hell? Their, their uniforms were so cool last year. The the whites and the, the gold trim, those were so clean, so fresh. And there's probably a reason for it. Like, oh, you know, we're just business. We're, we're, in, we're in business attire. Whatever, probably. But, man, that stunk. That was disappointing. Another team that's worse than I thought was Wisconsin. Um, Losing to Washington State. I said it. Pullman's a tough place to play. Tough place to pick up wins. But, um, yeah, I and certainly not, you know, as dire of a situation as Nebraska is with their first-year head coach. But, but overall, I mean, that's a tough loss to, to swallow. They should have picked up that one. Teams that I feel... I feel like I had pretty well. I feel the same about them. TCU and Clemson, they had pretty similar wins yet yesterday. Where if you just look look, look at them in the vacuum, they 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 were playing an opponent that were pretty undermatched as far as talents goes. He, TCU was playing Nickel State. I, I think Clemson was playing South Carolina State or something. But they really needed to bounce back because they lost a lot of, they lost the benefit of the doubt. And what I'll say about both of those their losses last year was, those teams are better than than they put out there. I, I think TCU just caught a little bit flat footed. Um, TCU didn't know what to expect with this Colorado team, had to play from behind almost the whole game had to, to to probably air it out more than they would have liked more than what was working for them. Um and Clemson, you know, kind of similar to Nebraska, like they just dumb turnovers in the red zone. If you turn it over in the red zone multiple times against Duke, again, watch my ACC preview. I talked about Duke. They're gonna be a tough win against any team. And especially if you're turning the ball over in the red zone, I guarantee you there's not a team on their schedule that are going to turn the ball over twice in the red zone and beat Duke. 
they're experienced, they're well coached. They're not going to lose games like that. Cal, uh, I, I felt kind of crazy about it because I, I I was doing my prep on, on Cal during my uh, my Pac-12 prep, and I'm like, man, I think this team's in for for a huge step up. They have a lot of experience back. They lost a lot of games close last year that they should have won. This feels like a bowl team to me, and they they took it to Auburn. You know, shot themselves in the foot a couple of times. Couldn't come away with the win. But that's a game not many people were were willing to, to give them the benefit of the doubt in. So Pac-12 is on this list. I think I accidentally left the monitor from last week. Um, that is what it is. As you see, I've been saying this for years, and I feel like the world's starting to, to catch up. The SEC is overrated. And I, I don't mean that they're not the best conference because I, I, I think that they are. But I think there's a couple of things that would make would lead you to believe that they are better than they are. First of all, they get an extra non-conference game than everybody else. The AC, I think the ACC does play eight still. But the Big Ten, the Big 12, the Pac-12, all play nine conference games. So traditionally, the SEC, you have this advantage where you get to add in another team of your choosing to to play. Now, whether that's a cupcake in the middle of the season or whether that's, you know, a, a, a rivalry game like South Carolina and Clemson, you know, it's it, it all kind of varies. But I think for, for the most part, we kind of see the former, you know, historically, where, you know, you're trying to pick up wins. You know, if you can go 4-0 and in, in, in conference schedule, all you have to do is win two conference games and you're in a bowl game. You have a, a get-right game in the towards the end of the year, November, where you see in Alabama play these atrocious teams right before sometimes the biggest game of the year in Auburn. That helps you out a little bit more if, unless you're, you know, the Big Ten playing nine straight conference games, like the Big 12 playing nine straight conference games. Having that get right game helps. And you know, that's, uh, it's not a, it's not nothing. And now we're, we're starting to see SEC teams in this new playoff era, you know, branch out and play other power five schools. Like Auburn playing Cal and Mississippi State playing Arizona. You know, those are probably on historically speaking, pretty favorable matchups for the SEC. And they just didn't look that much better than the Pac twelve did. Florida got beat up pretty bad by Utah, who had to, you know, have this great comeback win to beat Baylor yesterday. Um Obviously, we saw Alabama lose to Texas last last night. That's not nothing. I mean, Texas is a little bit better than almost any every team, but I mean, that's still a tough loss to swallow. Um, LSU got rolled by Florida State, thirty-one ten in the second half. So I, I, I don't. I think we're starting to see the writing on the wall that the SEC is not that much better than everybody else. Are they the best conference? Maybe. Probably. I'll I'll even say. But is the gap is the gap that big? I don't think so. I don't think it's been for a while. I think Georgia and Alabama have been so dominant over I mean, let's be honest, the last 20 years if we're including Alabama in that list that we see them win all these national championships. We see these them blow out everybody. We even saw Alabama blow out Big 12 champ Kansas State last year, which is where, you know, I kind of had a turning point. Like, All right, yeah, finally at the best conference. But so far, I don't know. And and like I said last week, and like I'll probably say again next week, when the SEC plays good quarterbacks, that, that defense that they seem to take so much pride in, it's not that good. It's not a very good defense. 
We saw Quinn Ewers throw for over 300 yards yesterday. We saw Texas rack up nearly 500 offensive yards in Tuscaloosa. That's not an elite defense. And 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 not to say that Alabama has you know not one of the better defenses in the country, but it's not that much better than everybody else. It's not that much better than the field, if so. And we see that year after year. We saw Spencer Rattler. Whenever he plays these SEC teams, they tear him up. We see these hundred point ball games now. Alabama, Tennessee last year. Alabama, LSU. When good quarterbacks are involved. They tear up SEC defenses. Jordan Travis tore up that SEC defense. And what was supposed to be one of the better teams in the SEC, which still might be one of the best teams in the SEC. We saw Tyler Van Dyke, who looked like a shell of himself last year, tear up a a Texas A&M defense. We saw C.J. Stroud do it last year. We saw, we see Bryce Young did do a week in, week out. I mean, the SEC is just not that good. And I'll, and, and I'll push that agenda pretty firmly here uh, going forward. But that's all I had. Just a, a little hangover episode. Just trying to, to vent this out. Jeff Sim stinks, man. I don't know what the answer is. I got to I'm at. I would imagine that you would consider all your options is all I'm saying. So it's, it's very disheartening to hear Matt Rule saying, nope, he's our guy. We're sticking with them. We ne- we didn't even think once about, you know, about going a different direction. Not after his first turnover in the red zone on a pretty big drive to, to get momentum set. Not after his second turnover. Not after his third turnover. Not after his fourth turnover. He did end up getting hurt. And we got to see a little bit of Henry Carver. Oddly enough, threw a touchdown. I turned the game off at that point. So I don't know if that was actually like a, like a good turnover. I don't know how he looked, but. It would be pretty fitting if he did go out there, look really good, and then still, you know, be QB2 going into next week. And I'll also say, as a Husker fan, Henry Carberg, the first native Nebraska quarterback to, to get a scholarship since 2001, that's a pretty good guy for, for, for this fan base to play around. He said in his press conference last, last night, like, something along the lines of, The, the fan base is, is rightly going to be pretty panicked. Give us something to rally around. You know, we're we're, we're all pretty much off of the, the Jeff Sims train. Give us Henrik Harburg. Let us rally around him. You know, ne- Nebraska native. You know, he's been with this program. He's committed to it. He's, you know, he, he's, he's one of those rare guys where it feels like he, he loves being a Husker as much if not more than playing – football per se because he could probably start elsewhere he's a talented guy and you know he's shown flashes and this and that but it'd be great to give him a chance to, and here's the thing even if he stinks even if he's not very good then we're right back where we started so i don't know what, what, what the harm is if we have competent quarterback play like i don't know one to one touchdown to interception ratio one to one turnover to touchdown ratio um, I think we're two and zero, and I think we'd be three and zero after after next week, and four and zero the week after. So we'll see. What I'll do it for me here today. You're watching the Cornhusker Connection Hangover Show. I'm Brandon Shanahan.